Blessed are those who live out their dreams. That's the difference between listening to the knock on the door and going and answering. God, that was great. <laughs> What a glorious place to be. Death? What's the dialogue that you have? Just this morning, I went out scrambling for a couple hours, and I was doing a route that's like pretty hard. And there were multiple times where I'm like, "Oh, I'm not trusting this foot, and if this foot slips off, like I will die." And obviously, I trusted the foot, and the foot didn't slip, and that was fine, and it all worked out. But just like having those kinds of experiences, like day in, day out, you know, throughout the year, it's like obviously you're much more, you have a much closer relationship with death. And everybody dies eventually in life. It's more a matter of how you lead your life to get there, I guess. From time to time, we come across someone who can do something so remarkable that it defies belief, and in this case, seems to defy gravity. It's the story of Alex Honnold. Alex Honnold is the living definition of defying the odds and living beyond limits. He doesn't let minor details like, let's say, gravity get in the way of his pursuit of the next extreme adventure. Alex Honnold is probably one of the most unlikely heroes of the climbing world. It's like the kind of guy, just when his name is mentioned, I just get a big smile on my face. He's like this super goofy, like awesome dude that just so happens to be the most badass climber ever. Alex climbs fast and light and often without ropes, completely free solo. One fall, you die. I think he was probably the first person that got video doing these big wall free solos in a way that everybody that watches it, it's like they get vertigo or their palms sweat when they watch it. And that just made him famous. His ability to control his fear is like no one else in the climbing community. It's just a switch that he can flip. If he knows he can do something, he can do it, whether it's five feet off the ground or a thousand feet off the ground. Alex has the ability to take giant things and make them seem small and simple in only a way that geniuses can do. Sometimes when other climbers hear what you've been doing, they say it's unsustainable, which really is their code for, you know, you can't keep doing this and stay alive. I hope Alex doesn't die on the wall one day, but given the fact that that's what he does more than anything else, the chances are pretty high that you know, something might happen someday. I think he's so aware of himself when he's climbing that I like to think that he's maybe the one that's gonna pull it off. Why do you have to add that extra challenge? Why do you need the higher stakes? Well, I guess like the short answer is we up the ante a little bit, you just get more from the experience. I just hope that if I do die in some accident someday, it's not just like, oh, he made all these horrible decisions, like what a terrible mistake. Because it's like, no, I mean, I understand that there are risks involved, but the hundreds of days of joy that I get going out and being in the mountains, like I'm willing to take those tiny chances. Okay, so this is everybody, we're going? Yeah. Bueno. So we're gonna hike a few miles into the backcountry to Mathis Crest, which is this amazing bridge. And then you wind up right at the bottom of this other like iconic feature called Cathedral Peak. And then normally you climb that as dessert. It makes it for this cool little roller coaster because you're going up and down along the ridge and then through this notch and then up to Cathedral. It's yeah. really cool. Using Alex's sand, which is, I just realized I'm digging your skin into my skin. That's probably gonna make your fingers stronger. Let's throw them out there. <laughs> So weird. So what? Brady, have you done Mathis before? I've, I've done almost nothing in Tuolumne before. I'm maybe free soloing it on Alex Honnold's advice, which is not always good to follow. <laughs> what do you think of Jared's escapades last night, Alex? Oh, I gotta say, I'm very impressed. Jugging out from top point sounds kind of badass. Everything is a muerte. Every climb. 
The whole Mathis part is basically a three to 500 foot drop on each side probably. One of our teammates is really lagging, so we're gonna have to cut him with a knife. Is he gonna be no. brutal and painful? No, 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 we're not gonna cut him. Like, oh shit, do you have a knife? What's that for? We're gonna cut him with a knife. Oh, no, I don't even hold that. <laughs> <laughs> She's right. dangerous. How are you feeling? Because, okay, so you're good? Yeah. Because from here, we're cutting like cross country, like to the other side of that mountain. Because once we get to there, then it's like a point to point back to here. But like, sure. if you're good, we're good. If I got rid of some of the weight in my bag, but I'm just gonna drink the water in a second. I mean, if it's a tough thing to do, he's embarrassed. I mean, Alex said he should probably cut your board. It's uh, that's, that's not true. Yeah, there's a million paths up the mountain, you know? Robert! <laughs> 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 I'm about to climb a mountain, I'll prove myself to you guys. So, yeah. Whatever you guys want to do. All right, look at that, look at that. <laughs> now we're good. We're good. So, right over here, we're looking at the ridge. Look at that. How old were you the first time you climbed Mount this crest? Uh, probably like 19 or 20 or something. I didn't really start climbing outside until I was like 19. I started camping here as a kid with family camping trips. Some of my early memories are having cookies and milk with my dad at the Wawona Tunnel Overlook. We'd bust out the cooler with some cold milk and we'd have cookies and you know, we'd enjoy the view with Bridalvale Falls and El Cap. My dad had spent thousands of hours belaying me in the gym. He was younger, he was like a big hiker. He was way into the mountains around Tahoe and everything. He would go to the climbing gym with me and just belay and belay. And he would climb a little bit just to break up my climbing, you know, so I could rest and he would just like climb a route or two. But he would just keep belaying, keep belaying. I was never like a prodigy the way some climbers have been. He saw that I loved climbing, and so he would just take me climbing, and I climbed a lot. I'm bummed that Dad hasn't gotten to see what my life has become, because he would be so stoked on the climbing and all the adventures and the expeditions, and when I get to go overseas. He died after my first year at university. I died of a heart attack running through the airport. He was 55 at the time. He was making a connection in Phoenix and just keeled over. It's like pretty grim. I think that had a big influence on my perception of risk and risk taking because I look at the life that he led and then still dying at a young age and you know the things that he would have loved to have done with his life just made me more aware of the fact that everybody's time will be cut short at some point. The important thing is what you do with your time. Nice. Took us two hours to the base. Nice work. Thank you. You're officially a champion. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, at least until you shit yourself on the first bitch. Ah. 5.0 in exactly two hours. I'm gonna make you legit. proud, motherfucker. Heck yeah. No, no, I'm so make far. You proud. I'm impressed. Yeah. We're about to climb Mathis Crest, which is a glorious, beautiful route. <laughs> 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 Okay, you're off the leg again. You're moving too fast to use the gear. Got it. So how about you untie and I'll take the rope for now? And then we can just solo next to each other. Um, yeah, it's nice to get a little rhythm going. Yeah, I mean, look how cool this is. As soon as I took off the rope, it was like, oh, now we can play. Okay, so it's Alex's fault, Mom. <laughs> Thank you, Alex. There's some solitude, there's some freedom, and it certainly raised the stakes and gave me a more fulfilling experience. Oh shit, we're jogging, huh? As soon as you guys all walked away, James and, and Rob and I were like, pretty impressive, like how hard he tries, the intensity and the effort. You know, because like I've been climbing so long, I sort of get complacent a little bit. I give just enough effort to do what I'm trying to do. You know, I don't just like go to the death all the time. You just
just try so hard because it's all fresh for you. It's, you know, you have that enthusiasm coming to a new sport, you're learning really quickly, you're improving really quickly, and it's all very exciting. It's nice to see that passion, you know? <laughs> Math is crest. Beginner. Slow. I'm just, I'm just as winded. <laughs> My whole. Man, this is really too. pristine. Isn't this seat. amazing? Oh, oh look, you can see our cap. Can you? Yeah, that little line over there, the drop, the vertical line. I'm pretty oh, sure that's shit. our cap. Isn't that cool? The mountains can humble you in a way that almost nothing else can, because you can be out having a great day and all of a sudden the wind picks up and then you get turned around and then your headlamp doesn't work and pretty soon you're like, oh wow, I could like perish by myself out in the woods because I just totally botched it. And you realize that like nobody would know, nobody would care, wilderness wouldn't care. It puts you in your place in the world, you know? You realize that you're just like this little speck. Just to see all of this without yeah, any it's amazing, huh? or cities or towns, I mean, fuck. Yeah. Some smart motherfuckers who uh, fought to keep this. How's the team doing? The team's doing awesome. We're freaking cruising this thing, and this is like super fun. How many hours until we get benighted? In like two hours, it'll be dark, but I mean, we're doing great, and everyone has a headlamp, and this is like, I'm, I gotta say, I'm very impressed with everybody. This is pretty fun. Chocolate cake. Pretty. <laughs> well, here we are, man. They're just hanging out up here with Stasaurus motherfucking ribs. One and only, Alex. Hello! How you doing, Alex? Just scared Alex. <laughs> That's pretty fucked up. Yeah, what would you say to your father if he walked up and sat next to you? I don't know, it'd be a very long conversation. I mean, there'd be a lot of catching up to do. I'd probably say thank you for, you know, supporting me as a kid and getting me outdoors and like giving me these experiences, allowing me to blossom into this lifestyle. I doubt I'll ever stop doing the easy soloing in the mountains, the scrambling on ridges. I'll probably never stop that. Anything I've learned as a person is like entwined with climbing. And certainly becoming a professional climber has seriously changed me. Typical human beings, it's never enough. We are going to climb Cathedral Peak because we haven't had enough, you know? Free soloing with Alex just isn't enough. Alex, if you believe in me, anything's possible. Heck yeah. I'm going to go over to the snow and see if I can ride it. Nice. Just because, like, you know, I mean, what's... What's the point of being in the mountains if you don't enjoy the ride? Yeah. This is fucking terrific. So we climbed this beautiful route, Mathis Crest. We stayed down some snow, which was super fun. And then we wound up soloing Cathedral Peak in the dark, which really like sort of capped off the whole adventure. Okay, are we ready? We oh, are ready. Stoked for you, this is sick. You just like lean across, then you have those plates out right. Yep. And uh, and you're gonna be putting your whole hand in basically? Yeah, good. I'm good. I'm with you. It's called muscling. Yep. Get up. No fucking cry. Not only is it my first time climbing cathedral, it's my first time, my first day free soloing. And we started at five o'clock and it's now middle of the night. A lot of faith going into this stuff tonight. Really great life lessons to the summit. Oh my god. Wow. Once we're up here for a bit, we should all turn off our headlamps so you can actually see the high country. It's pretty rad. How do you hope to die? I hope to die at like 94 in my bed, just peacefully, just fall asleep. Yeah, surrounded by grandkids or whatever, you know? Yeah. We'll see. That's the ideal. I'm not saying that's the most likely scenario. So when your son comes to you and says, Dad, I'm gonna free solo El Cap, what do you say? I'd say you better be freaking training, you know? I hope you're really fit. Come on, look at the elbow, look at the elbow. That's how you make it hit. Yeah, one more. <laughs> look at the elbow. Oh! One more. Wait, one more. Oh! I'm awfully vigorous for the middle of the night. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, dude. Oh, it's okay, brother.